Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about some Christmas gifts, some a lot of cookbooks. I actually have quite a few that I wanted to talk about today. Um, some last minute decoration ideas for Christmas. I know that the holidays have definitely crept up on me. I'm sure it's probably the same all the way around. So just waiting for our Amazon live audience real fast, and then we'll get right to it. So yep, I quickly go through. I've got my Elgato face cam on here. It is a uh, 18% off today, which is pretty spectacular. We also have, I also need to get my video and stuff up. Apparently I'm ill prepared. Um, I also had to charge my uh, Apple iPad today, but that's also a great gift option. It was actually gifted to me. It's a great group gift as well. If you have people that maybe want a laptop or uh, they draw, iPad's a great option. So the first official thing I have are these candles and they're 13% off today. And let me find them real quick. This is a great gift uh, that I actually am going to kind of divide up between different people. So I like to do big stockings or Christmas baskets for my friends and family. And I like to put little things in there like candles or treats or, you know, like, and then a big thing like a cookbook or something. So I like to utilize my time and money and energy and buy like a big thing like this and then split it amongst people. So these are a can set of candles. So they're really fun. I kind of like their boho themed uh, look here. Uh, by the way, hello, everybody who is now watching on, I don't know, maybe YouTube or something like that. Thanks for joining me. If you are interested in any of these Christmas items, they're not just cookbooks. Make sure to check us out on our platform. I forgot the banner too. It's been a while since I've actually done cookbook divas. So uh, follow us here at amazon.com slash live slash cookbook divas, and you'll be able to find this stuff a lot easier than on YouTube or Facebook. Anyway, so these are a great candle option. Uh, they're very fragrant. Like I can smell them all right now. Uh, let's see. We have a whole list of them, not on the box, but I'll just give you a little preview of a few of them. Not every single one of these candles because we have a lot of items to go through today. So for instance, one of them is we have, of course, Sandalwood Rose. Hold on a second. Uh, then we also have here, this one is Lemon. So very different. And then the other one I picked, Coffee. Okay. So one thing I do like is that it's very snug it's sealed so it keeps the freshness. Um, if you pull this, oh, I'm so sorry, that was probably super loud. Um, so you pull the string and then you can open the top. So it does keep its freshness. Wow, that is actually very, very, very coffee fragranted. So I also like these, ba uh, these boxes because personally, whenever I get candles during the holidays, they're always holiday candles. And by the time the holidays have arrived, I've been smelling holiday fragrances for months, right? I'm kind of over it. So I want a candle that's a little different or maybe I can use all year round. So that's another reason why I like these kits for that reason, so that people can get actual fragrances that you can use all year round. So that's the first item that's up on my list, but this is a great gift you can divide up or you can just give any person in your life who is a candle lover a whole thing of candles. All right, the next thing I want to talk about, this is really cute. It's mostly for kids, but I really like it. It is called the Mini Bake Shop and I'm already it's already falling apart on me. So here is what it is. This is by Klutz. Um so there's a book and activity kit you can see you can they're little clay figures you can make um, and they are so cute. I love it. Um, and it's a little cookbooky over on Cookbook Divas. So, you know, it's relevant kind of getting your kids interested in food. Sometimes it requires like pretend food, right? So here are your different options. You can make these with clay. This is fun with the kids. Look at how adorable this is. I love it. So if you're looking for some fun activities just to do or uh, still some last minute kids gifts, check out this brand. It's really cool. I like it. And I'll share with you guys another um, thing from that brand. But real quick, they actually have inside of here different decorations you can put on your little fake clay cakes. 
and cute little placemats. It's adorable. I love it. So here's what the actual box says, or here's the presentation. I don't want to take everything out because I might actually use this as a gift. So here is kind of the things you get. You get a little roller, which is kind of nice. It mimics actually baking. Um, we have shaping, decorating, different colors you can use as well. It's very, very cute, very fun. So check this out if you do have any people in your life, little people that enjoy baking or kind of, you know, experimenting with that. Uh, it's a great introduction and they're very cute. So the other one though, if maybe you don't have a little baker in your life, but they like animals, here's another option. They're it's a clay adoption. So here's what this looks like. Pet adoption truck. And you actually get a cute little truck too. Oh, it's adorable. I love it. So here's what it looks like up close. Here's it the back, different things you actually get. Um, it is so cute. So let me find the actual activity book so you can get a little close up. You get step-by-step -step photos on how to make each animal. Look at the corgi. It's adorable. I hate it. I mean, I love hate it, but oh my God, here's a bunny and carrot you can make. So I like that they give you a guide and a step-by-step. -step. Sometimes like this guinea pig is kind of involved in the bird. Very cool. Here's a beagle. So again, this is a great gift option for any crafty kids out there. Check out this whole brand Klutz. They've got a whole bunch of other ones. There's another one that was like a sushi making one and I had to refrain from buying that one too. So check out the pet adoption. This is also great. It says it comes with 15 clay animals and a display. That's really cool. Uh, for those of you that just joined me over on Amazon, make sure to uh, follow us if you do enjoy this kind of stuff, especially cookbooks, which I will go through a cookbook right now. Um, we like to do live streams quite often. So if that's kind of your thing, make sure to give us a follow and you'll be notified of our future live streams. All right. Let me put this away really fast before I lose it all. And then we will talk about a cookbook on the shelf. So this cookbook is one that a lot of people have been really, really raving about. It is called The Smitten Kitchen Keepers. It's kind of a mouthful. Uh, Smitten Kitchen Keepers. Let me find this in the carousel real fast, and then we will definitely break it down. Here we go. It's actually on sale for 32% off right now, which is very cool. I thought the front cover was uh, pesto. It is not pesto. So let's actually find it in here. Here is just a little preview. Okay, here. Here, it's very photo forward, which is very nice. That's my favorite thing about cookbooks. But here are the table of contents. We have breakfast, salad, soups. Uh, we also have vegetables. And one thing that's interesting about this particular cookbook that I was a little... I don't know. I don't know if surprised. It's different. They have sub chapters in the vegetable section, at least. That's like small vegetable recipes, medium vegetable recipes, and large vegetable recipes. So I was like, that's kind of cool. I'm surprised. So let's look at the recipes and the photos, of course. We have a peach crumb muffin. This looks awesome already. And this looks like a cupcake, I got to be honest. So one thing about this cookbook is that it is not gluten-free. It's not dairy-free. It's very straightforward. Like, I don't know what you would say, regular people. I've got celiac, so I can say these things. We have a note here. So additional uh, tips and tricks throughout the book. And a lot of these recipes are kind of just plays of classics. So for instance, this look, this recipe looks good. I am, a, I love cinnamon rolls. This is actually a Kala cheesecake bun. Yum. Again, that looks amazing. Here we have snow peas with pecorino and walnuts. I love the photos. These are just really nice. Nothing too complicated. Chili, perfect for winter time. Uh, skillet white beans, Caesar, quote Caesar. So a lot of these too, like when you look through it, I'll try to get this up close for you so you can kind of see many of these as it falls apart on me. 
these recipes are very straightforward. The ingredient list is not that it, there's not a lot of ingredients that go into each one of these dishes and the directions are very straightforward, very simple. So it's a really good cookbook for um, just getting a little twist on a classic uh, international foods as well, but it's also just straightforward and easy. There's no like weird stuff going on, which I appreciate. Cooking doesn't have to be crazy fancy all the time. Here we have a tomato and corn cobbler. Baked orzo and artichokes. I love artichokes. Uh, here we also have, I'll go a little forward, fettuccine with white ragu. That is, again, a wonderful classic. This looks really good. I'm not sure what it is, though. Hold on. Raclette. Tart to fillet. I like how I say that cooking doesn't have to be fancy, and then that's really fancy to me. Um, here, uh, let's see. This one is a thick molasses spice cookie. So we do have desserts in here. My favorite part. This one's a Lux s'mores bar, and I'll do one more, and then we'll move on to something else. Mango curd tart. No, it's not pumpkin pie. That's the first thing I thought. Okay, I lied. One more. Family style creme brulee. I love this idea because most of the time, you know, you get a tiny little creme brulee, um, you know, just for yourself. And it kind of sucks. It'd be nice to share. So I like that this is a sharing dessert. All right. So this is a really great cookbook. Um, this is one, I mean, a lot of people love, I mean, lots of accolades for it. This would make a really great gift for anybody that maybe just moved out and like college kids and they, you know, they like cooking. So check out Smitten Ki Kitchen Keepers. Lots of classics, super fun, easy cookbook. This is by Deb Perelman. I can't, I don't remember. Anyway, super good. All right. The next thing I'm going to talk about real fast, we're kind of going to go a little back and forth today. We have here, these are Naturally Vain. I like their name, bath bombs. So here they are. Hold on, I gotta grab them. Okay. So another super easy, great gift. People love bath bombs. I mean, really. Uh, so this one's fun. It has different kinds of scents. So here we have a bath pod, uh, Angry Rose, Fruit Loop. There's birthday cake, spring breaker, strawberry jam, Milky Way, peaceful zen, and enchanted forest. So you get nine in a pack. And again, kind of similar to the candles I just showed. I like to divide these up. So I put them in a cute little Christmas bag. And then each person, you know, would get like a little bath bomb. And it's kind of cute to fill uh, a little basket full of different little goodies for people. So this is another option that you can do, or you could just give this whole thing to one person and they'll probably dig it. So check this one out too. This is really nice, easy, simple, different scents for different kinds of people, like people who like more creamy flavors versus fruity flavors or more earthy flavor. I like how I'm talking about bath bombs, like their flavors. Don't eat them. Uh, different scents uh, people prefer. So check this one out too. This is a really easy, fun gift. I'm going to move on to something else. We're going to talk about candles again. So this is a great gift. I would say just straight for one person. This is La Jolie Muse. It's their home collection. It looks really festive. Just the box itself. You can put a cute little ribbon around it if you wanted to. Um, but the scents inside are not holiday scents. So keep that in mind. But it does look really festive. So hold on a second. Uh, they have, I think, oh, okay, on the back. So we have Cozy Home, Sweet Passion, and Mediterranean Breeze. So they're all very, um, they're candle, they're very different candles, but you can have them around all year. There's no holiday festivity scent, fragrance. So here's kind of what the box looks like. Each one has a different color. But it's surprising that they're all paisley looking. This one's the only one that kind of fits the actual theme of the box, which is kind of cool. So this is what they look like in the box. But they've got a beautiful fragrance. La Jolie is a really, really awesome brand. I do recommend them. So check this out, too, if you're looking for a last-minute, quick, easy, cheap 
er gift. Not cheap, but you know, it's a nice, thoughtful gift. Um, La Jolie Muse, this is their home collection. Next, we're going to talk about, well, let's talk about this little squishy Santa here. So I actually have a lot of people who are having winter babies this year uh, around Christmas time. And I've been kind of thinking about what to give them and little baby as well. So Aurora World has a really awesome selection of really soft toys for like plushies for kids or babies. This one's adorable. So it's cylindrical. It looks like a little can, but it's Santa. Super cute. Um, and it is very soft, very similar to Squishmallows. They are, uh, but it's their brand. They're called Squishables. I think that's what they're called. That might not be correct. It's called Santa Mallow. So that's Aurora World. But another thing that's cool about this brand is that they use, it's eco-friendly. So they use recyclable material and they create all of these really awesome plushies with them. So I like kind of supporting companies that do that. So I would definitely check this out. If you are into Squishmallows, I know a lot of people are in it. People are obsessed with them. Uh, you can check this brand out too. I don't know if Squishmallow does the recyclable or eco-friendly, but these guys do. Great brand. Click through the carousel. You'll see a lot of really cool festive stuff or just general adorable plushies. So, but I wanted to share Santa because I do have a lot of friends that are having babies around now. Um, so it's a good gift option. All right. The next thing is tea. So we love tea over here and tea fort is uh, amazing. So they do have holiday flavors and you can use these as gifts for yourself or for other people who do like tea. So this is warming joy. I love the box. Again, great. I mean, it's a great present. So you just open it up, perfectly sealed. It looks really cute. It does have, let's see if I can, it's hard to see, but there is a label on the very bottom that talks about what kind of tea it actually is. So I have friends who cannot do caffeine. So it's nice to have it all labeled for you so that you know exactly what kind of tea it is if you do have caffeine sensitive people in your life. So this particular tea comes with a raspberry ganache, a cherry marzipan, which I am very curious about, sweet orange spice, apple heart or harvest apple, apple spice, and then winter chai. So lots of really great flavors, different kinds as well. So, but it's still very festive. So check this one out. This is the tea fort warming joy tea. It's really nice. You can sip on it while you're making breakfast or whatever you want to do. All right. So the next thing I want to share today is let me skip to, we'll do another cookbook. Why not? Great British Bake Off cookbook. So it is their favorite flavors. I just finished the Great British Bake Off, the la latest season. Finally, it took me forever to get to it. But um, I think this is from the, the most previous contestants. Let me actually check. Now that I'm actually more educated about it. I think it is. No, it's not. It says just favorite flavors. I'm not sure if this is a particular season. It came out this year. So um, the contributors. Oh, no, there are a few. It's a mix of different seasons. But it does seem primarily from the previous season. Okay. Sorry, that was me rambling. Great British Baking Show favorite flavors. So you can see here, it's a very photo forward book. And again, great. You can also kind of see here, hopefully, let's see if I can make it a little more apparent. Um, you can see that the pages are color coordinated, which is very helpful. And these are all to indicate different um, flavor profiles. And that's how the whole book is divided up in their table of contents. So... For instance, we have spicy, aromatic, tart, and tangy, fresh and fruity, sweet and sticky, nutty and earthy, rich and creamy. So that's how this whole thing is broken up is by flavor. Um, and it's beautifully photographed. So let's look. It's, oh my God. Holy cow. 
This is the raspberry and rose drip cake already. Showstopper. Stunning. This would be a great wedding cake. Um, let's move on. So again, this is all by flavor. I know that people were uh, kind of <laughs> upset with the Great British Baking Show this year because they couldn't figure out tacos. That was one of their test things this year. So there is a taco recipe in here. Uh, we also have a coffee and ginger layer cake. We have different photos featuring some of the contestants of this previous season. Um, so if you did fall in love with any of their uh, bakes, they will probably have them in this particular cookbook. Here we have chai spiced apple Chelsea buns, which sounds awesome. Here is, ooh, a Trace Leches splatter cake. I'm just impressed because I feel like Trace Leches isn't solid enough to tear it, but apparently I'm wrong. I just, you know, it's, so, I love Trace Leches, but I'm, I'm impressed. Here we have Prue's lemon meringue pie. Holy cow. Black Forest Pavlova. That's beautiful. So, um, one thing I haven't said is that this is definitely a advanced baking book, aside from the tacos in here, <laughs> I would say. So there are a lot of really elaborate bakes in here uh, that that are just they're kind of beyond a beginning bake beginner baker. So keep that in mind. But alternatively, this is a really good gift for anybody in your life who is a, an avid baker and wants to really test their skills. So I, I do think this would be really fun or just anybody who loves the Great British Baking Show. This is really fun. So a few more cakes. We have the rhubarb and strawberry crumble cake. That looks beautiful. We also have a ginger and treacle tart. We do have savory bakes, rye and beer bread. That one's probably one of the easier ones you'll find in this baking book. A baked custard tart with roasted plums. Wow. Wow. That looks really cool. And then triple chocolate mini mousse cakes or mini cakes. Cute. So check this one out. It's a really fun cookbook. This is, let me look at the pricing. This is 10% off today. So very cool. I, I'm I really dig it. This would be a really awesome gift. So make sure to uh, check this one out if you do know anybody that likes the Great Brit British Baking Show or if they're collecting the cookbooks. They have a lot of cookbooks coming out. Okay, next up, let's go back. We're going to talk about a few kids' toys. This is a little different. So this is called the Just Play Art Squad Dolls. So here we have, let me see if I got the right one up. Yes. Okay. So this is Andy. This is 50% off. So this is a like a DIY art squad doll. So you get a doll, but each doll is associated with a particular art form. So Andy does bead art. So it comes with different beads and crafts that you can put, you can have for yourself or for your doll. Here's kind of what the back looks like. I'm not going to take her out quite yet, but I love the idea. So there's 15 different pieces. We have different people. They, I'm not sure what the other two are, but we have another doll that does etch art, which is also very cool. You can color her clothing, and I'm wondering if you can wash and recolor it, which is really fun. So... It also has, you know, a description of who the doll is and whatnot, but it's a really great gift uh, for kid, older kids, obviously. So it's for, I don't know why it says five and up. So it says for ages five and up, but be careful, especially with the bead one. Uh, but it's fun. The dolls look really cute. She kind of reminds me of Harlequin with her hair. I'm not going to lie, but she's cute. I like her. And then the other one from the same series of dolls is Nene. What a name. Uh, so this one's the etch, etching art. This one's cool. So you can actually see her skirt here. It's totally black and it looks like paper. That's because you can actually etch whatever you want on the doll's skirt. I think that's really clever. I really like that. So this is also uh, for ages five and up. 
This is for, um, sorry, my brain. Oh, this is 50% off as well. So you can actually get both of the dolls and then you can do two different DIYs. Here is the back. You get 15 plus pieces for this as well. You can create all the etching art. See, look at the different things that they were able to do here. Different, you can make like a cool spider web skirt, all multicolored. You can color. It's really fun. So check this out if you do have really creative kids that love, you know, that love dolls and doing some sort of craft together. That's just a really clever, I think it's a great idea. So this is really fun. I'm not sure what the other two do. So I would definitely click through and look and see. I'm I'm really curious. I should actually just look myself. One of them kind of looks glittery. So, or like stickers. Oh, there's a lot of cool options. So yeah, check this whole brand of dolls out. They're really fun. Okay, so next on this list of things. Oh no, I forgot. Okay. So I have it in my carousel. Maybe I'll grab it. Hold on. I'm going to grab it real fast. I should have done this earlier. I apologize. Okay. So we have cookie cutting. This is something that's a, I, I know it's a Christmas tradition for a lot of people is cookies. So we, um, this is a particular cut cookie cutter set that have to, has different shapes, sizes, shape sizes, not different shapes. Uh, so you can actually stack this together and make a, like a tree with these snowflake shapes. So there's nine different snowflake shapes here. They're all the same shape, but look at how cute it can be. This would make a great decoration on the table too. You can, you know, on Christmas Eve, you and the kids can like, you know, bake a bunch of cookies, decorate and create little trees throughout the house. Maybe Santa will come and take one of the trees away and the kids will be like, oh my God, the tree. Uh, but it's really cute. I love this idea in general. I think it's really, really fun and it's simple. And you're going to use these for I mean, forever, for every holiday. It doesn't even have to be for Christmas since they are uh, snowflakes. You could do just winter stuff. I have a winter birthday, so it'd be kind of cute and, you know, still wintry. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. So check this brand, uh, this particular thing out. And um, yeah, I'd love to actually see a bunch of different people's Christmas tree art. This is kind of what I was trying to show, but it's very difficult to show with no cookies. All right. So the next thing on the list today, let's see. Oh, I haven't even shown some of these lights here. I have. Thank you, Christy, for the follow. I really appreciate it. So yeah, since Christy it did give us a follow, I'll just do my little spiel. Um, if you are interested in any of our cookbooks, make sure to follow us on our socials. They're all listed down here at Cookbook Divas. And um, if you do like this kind of stuff, make sure to give us a follow here uh, and uh, you'll be notified of all of our live streams when we do go live. All right. So the next thing I wanted to share is this Christmas light. So I really hate my camera because it washes everything out. This is really, really colorful. And I, I know you probably don't believe me, but it really is. So it's actually multicolored. It's red, green, and blue. And oh God, I wish you guys could see this. So you can kind of see it a little bit, but it's way more vibrant in person. It looks really glittery. It's got a little bubbler on the very bottom. So when you turn it on, it just constantly goes. And it's actually quite bright. It's really fun to see the glitter kind of shining on the walls. Uh, so it's, I we had the power go out on us not, not that long ago. And thank you, Richard. Nice to see you. Um, and thank you so much for doing all this promotion stuff. You're awesome. <laughs> So, uh, uh, sorry. Okay. We had our power go out and luckily I did have a lot of these battery operated lights and this one gave off a lot of light. I was really, really surprised and grateful for, you know, having so many battery operated devices. So, um, one thing to note is that 
It does take three triple A battery batteries. Um, usually a lot of these only take double A's. So this is really great for kids' rooms. If you're still trying to be a little more festive, it's really, I mean, it's a really fun light. And it sucks that you guys can't see how colorful it is, but it is actually quite colorful. So let me move on to the next thing real fast. Well, not real fast. It's it's a it's a day of taking time. Speaking of baking, I should have done this while we were doing the snowflakes. But I um I personally like the blue, white, silver aesthetic personally versus the red and green. I don't know. Maybe red and green will grow on me one day. But um, so you can decorate some of your cookies. Don't forget to get sprinkles. Uh, that's something that I forgot one year and it was really embarrassing because I was like, hey, kids, we're going to decorate all these Christmas cookies. It's going to be so much fun. And then all I had was just frosting and the kids were like, oh, yay. And uh, yeah, they were expecting sprinkles. So make sure to check out some sprinkles. With, uh, is it? Yeah. Wilton. Is a wonderful brand, and they have a lot of fun, different sh uh, shapes, sizes, and kinds of sprinkles. So we have little snowflakes, cute pearls, sparkly blue, and then the typical, what would you call this? They call them jimmies. So really fun sprinkles, but they do have your traditional red, white, and green sprinkles as well that are all Christmas-oriented. This one I just like because it's more wintry. I can use it for more than just Christmas because who's going to go through all these sprinkles in, in one Christmas year? Some people do, I'm sure. The other decoration thing I wanted to share with you guys today, I hope I can find it. I hope I added it. It is this neon light. I probably didn't. Of course I didn't. I'm just going to share it anyway. Maybe I'll go back here. I'll try to find this while I talk about it. It's bright. It's a neon light uh, snowman, and it is really fun. So it actually comes with either a plug-in for a USB, which if you do have that handy and you just want to plug it in, that's great. Or you can do a battery. It's battery operated. So this takes three triple or double A's. Let me, I'm still trying to find this in my carousel. Okay. Uh, I found it. Perfect. So bear with me as I highlight this in the carousel. But yes, this is really awesome. I actually really like it. And one thing too, uh, with these neon lights, usually something I've found is that uh, this can either come off as really yellow or a really cold light, you know, like uh, camping lights. That's what it reminds me of. This one is truly a warm, warm tone of a light. It's not yellow and ugly. It's actually really nice. So if you're looking for some simple, again, winter decorations still for Christmas, these guys are still available. It's only $12.99, so it's pretty reasonable, and it's really, really cute. Thank you so much, Richard. I appreciate it. So I'm going to talk about another cookbook because I do have quite a few. This one I will rave about all day because I love it. So it's 101 Asian Dishes to Cook Before You Die by Jet Tila. Um, this, this is my book. I use this book all the time. It's why it's a little rough around the edges because I've been using this for years. Um, so and Jet Tila, I love him so much. He's awesome. It's an approachable cookbook. Uh, I appreciate his jargon personally. Some people are like, oh, I can't handle it. I can't. Uh, so just that's something to be aware of. But here is kind of what you'll see. It's very, very photo forward as well. And it definitely gives you a great overview of some classic Asian dishes from all, all over Asia. I mean, we've got India, Thailand, of course, because it's Chetila. We've got Vietnam, Japan, China, all kinds of places, Mongolia. So lots of places, lots of classics and history even. So like Dan Dan noodles is like, that's where spaghetti comes from, China. Uh, so I didn't know that until I read this book of years and years and years ago. But here we go. We have Korean barbecue short ribs. It And this recipe is really good. I've had it. 
uh, miso roasted black cod. The last pot thai recipe you'll ever need. And I don't know if any of you have tried to cook pot thai before, but it is like pancakes. And I, sw and, but the problem with pot thai versus pancakes is like you can, you have multiple chances with, with pancakes. Uh, pot thai, you have one chance. <laughs> so um, this one has been so far the best pot thai recipe I have found in any cookbook and authentic. So that if that's something that you've been curious about, I give this book like props. Okay. We also have a uh, Korean chop jay glass noodles with beef. This is an amazing recipe. We have two, the Coke, uh, the Tomka soup. Again, classic Thai soup. This one's this one's straightforward and really awesome and easy. So something that uh, Jet Tila does do, he's got pro tips. And some ingredients, yes, are unavailable to some people. You know, I'm lucky. I live in Seattle. So there's a lot of ingredients in here that I can get. But there's not that's not necessarily the case for everybody. He gives us different tips on how to do things or substitutions or, you know, how to make it yourself maybe. And it is really easy. So I love it. We have a papaya salad. I'll do a few more. Dim sum drum dumplings. Yum. I wished I had a steamer. And then we have minced chicken lettuce cups with hoisin sauce. This is also a really awesome fast weekday dish. Uh, we even have some desserts, coconut sticky rice with mango. That's a classic, and it's very good. Fried bananas is one of my favorites. Uh, and we have two, oh, yeah, not everything has a photo, but we have, like, coconut rice pudding, lots of different rice puddings. Um, we even have some chai tea mixes, Thai iced tea mixes. Uh, we even have different stocks. So again, if maybe some of these things aren't readily available to you, you can make them and the ingredients are usually available to everybody. So again, I do recommend if you are wanting to get into cooking Asian food at all, this is a fantastic cookbook. This is my favorite cookbook. I use it all the time. So it's 101 Dishes You Need to Cook Before You Die by Jet Tila. I love Jet Tila. Okay. So I'm going to talk about one more cookbook, and then I'll move on to some more uh, some more Christmassy things. The other cookbook I was actually surprised about is The Comfortable Kitchen by Alex Snodgrass. Let me see if I can find... Yep, that was easy. This is 40% off today. So if you're looking for easy weekday meals, and you want to just try something different. Maybe your weekday meals have been the same for months and you're like, I'm kind of tired of what I'm doing. <laughs> um, this is a great option. Not only that, so something that's really great about her cookbook is she talks about everybody's on a different diet these days, right? So it's hard to find a cookbook that's tailored for you and tastes good. And maybe not just tailored for you, but people that might not be on the same diet as you. She has up here on every ingredient who it's actually good for. So this, for instance, is gluten-free. It is dairy-free if modified. And then it's also vegetarian. But we also have things like, I think we have paleo, whole 30. There's grain-free. So there's a lot of different frees in this time. So she's kept all of that in mind. And I appreciate that. It's it's hard to find cookbooks that are that talk about all of those things because there's just too many. So here are some of the photos. It's very photo forward. Again, love that. Perfect. Lots of really great meals in here. So here we have an herby green olive pasta with feta. And these are super easy to make during the weekday. Even something like this, the one pot Cajun chicken pasta is really, really simple to put together even on a weekday. Considering how many ingredients are in here, this is usually what I look at first when I look at a cookbook and I'm like, do I really want to make this on a weekday? <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, so, and if it looks like this, usually I'm like, mm, no, not really. Um, but she does have great recipes that are, these are all great weekday meals. A uh, steak, ah, uh, pavor, no, 
French. Okay. Epic baked meatballs. We have uh, pictures of her and her kids and her husband. Mexican pizza. There's a sheet pan kielbasa with mustard vinaigrette. Yum. That looks good. We have juicy indoor burgers with burger sauce. Texas style instant pot or slow cooker brisket tacos. Again, perfect all the time. Beautiful. And every chapter, I forgot to go through this. So we do have chapters pretty standard uh, based on usually the meats. So it's like chicken, seafood, beef, pork, vegetarian dishes. But then we also have pastas, soups, salads, appetizers, pantry staples, cocktails. We also have sides and sweets all provided in this cookbook. So here's some more. We have fish. Here's some sides. I always get caught up on sides. So it's, you know, it's really nice to have a whole variety. And this is very global, kind of uh, different spinoffs on a lot of classic dishes too. Scotcheroos. Individual Texas sheet cookies. So check out The Comfortable Kitchen. This is a great cookbook uh, as a gift too. It's very comprehensive when it comes to different diets. Like <laughs> There's just so many. Uh, so check this one out. I think Alex Snodgrass might be a Whole30 advocate or something. I think that's kind of how she got her name. So if you are into Whole30, sometimes it's hard to find different cookbooks that aren't specifically Whole30, this is one of them that might be a little different, like off kilter, but still a uh, Whole30. All right. So next one, uh, we'll talk about just a few more little Christmassy gifts. So uh, we also have a tea fort. It's the Winter Chalet. So this one's kind of nice. You don't have to use this as a Christmas gift. It could just be a winter holiday gift, a birthday gift for any of your tea lovers out there. So here you just open it up. It's sealed. Uh, one thing you might be able to see here is that the logo, not logos, but the names of the teas are also highlighted in different color. So you have your black tea, green teas, herbal teas. So um, I like this because I have a lot of people that are caffeine sensitive in my life. So I want to make sure I don't give them, you know, a black tea or a green tea. Um, I need to make sure it's herbal tea. So I like that. Here's the different options in this particular tea set. We have sweet orange spice, Belgian mint, Mountain, mountain oolong. We also have chocolate fondue and ginger lemongrass. So very different uh, profiles, flavor profiles, but also just a really thoughtful gift for any of your tea lovers out there. It's winter chalet. Look at this beautiful box. I love it. It's cute. All right. Next up, I have a few more kids stuff. So let me find it in my care. Oh, here. I haven't talked about this one yet. This one's 20% off. So it's actually a cute little light. Uh, so I mentioned earlier on our, uh, on this particular, particular, I'm having a word issue, particular live stream that the power went out not that long, long ago. And uh, I was lucky that I have all these battery, battery operated candles, but I accidentally broke my little, the top here off in the midst of the darkness. So it has typically, this has like a cute little flame, like a fake flame and it disperses the light or not disperses. It mutes the light. You see how it's kind of pinpointed. Sorry, my alarm's going off. Um, so yeah, I kind of broke mine, but it's still really cool. And I think I kind of like it better this way. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, the little uh, flame is a little corny, but you know, to each their own, no judgment. So here we have, it looks like it's a melty candle. This is actually glittery. It's hard to see. And unfortunately, again, my camera is washing everything out. The glitter inside is multicolored. It's kind of this beautiful iridescent sparklies. It is a snow globe, so you can see. I don't actually have to shake it up. I mean, I could, but it does have a little tiny bubbler in there that slowly mixes the sparkles together. 
Very cute. You see cute little Christmas carolers, snowmen inside. I know it's so hard to see my this light. Uh, one thing that I'm not a huge fan of, but it doesn't make... So when it's amongst other candles, it definitely is yellowy. So my camera is not fooling us by showing you that it's yellow. Um, but when it's by itself on its own countertop, not amongst all the other candles, it actually doesn't look as yellowy. I'm just letting you know that's something that I noticed. I do like the aged look on the stand. It's just cute. So check this one out. This brand has a lot of cool candles for every holiday and during every little season. So check uh, this brand out and just kind of keep an eye out. They have a lot of fun Halloween candles, Christmas candles. I'm kind of excited for all of the other like Easter, maybe St. Patrick's Day. So check out Eldrickle, I think, uh, or Eldenekel Christmas snow globe candles. They have other things uh, as well in there, not just snowmen, but I picked the little snowmen. Okay. <clears throat> so next I want to share with you guys uh, oh, I was looking at for those kids' toys. That's right. Okay, here it is. I think he dropped. Yes. Okay. So another simple, easy, cute stocking stuffer option are these Aurora stuffy plushies. He's really cute. His cheeks light up. You can barely see. Oh my goodness, that sucks. My light is washing everything out. You can kind of see on this side too. I know it's really difficult. I am grateful that this does not sing. I hate it when these things sing. So I like that it's just a light. Very cute. Um, it's soft, but it still has those glass beads. So it's not good for um, like newborns or younger children. So be careful of that. But it's still just a really thoughtful, adorable little stocking stuffer. Kids are going to love it. Obviously, it lights up. So it's going to, you know. I love that stuff when I was growing up. And it's just precious. We also have a couple other ones that aren't light up. But let me find it <clears throat> real fast. So this is, again, by the same brand, Aurora. But these are cute little snowmen. So I have, I have a sister, and we would always get gifts kind of like this. So I would get this one, and then my sister would get this one. Um, and now as an adult, when I'm looking at it, I was like, oh, that's really, that's actually quite cute. So if you have a similar situation like that and you want to gift, you know, your nieces or nephews something cute like this or little stocking stuffers, these guys are an option. They're $9.99. They're not on sale. There is a third one that I do not have. And I think he might actually be my favorite. He looks really cute, like a little bird with a hat, uh, same kind of shape. And Carrie who usually does this show, she actually pointed out to me, these guys are marshmallows. So you can kind of see that. These guys are cute little snowmen marshmallows. And I had no idea. So I love this. And if you do think about it, if you wanted to create like a fun little stocking stuffer for friends or family, you can put him in a cute little Christmas mug you can have some hot cocoa, you know, just different samplers in your little mug, wrap it all up. And there's your gift. Pretty simple, but still really thoughtful and cute. So check that out. And I do, I almost forgot about this too. <clears throat> I personally like to make my life really easy during the holidays or just actually in general, generally. So I'm gluten-free and I love this lemon pound cake mix. Uh, it's usually, it it's already kind of difficult, but I just bought a um, lemon peeler specifically for peeling lemons, um, but I didn't have that before. And you usually need that to get the lemony flavor out of anything. And so it was a huge hassle to make anything lemony. So it was really cool to see this just pre-done lemon pound cake mix, gluten-free, and it actually is very tasty. Uh, one thing is you can, they provided a vegan, yeah, a, a dairy-free option and a, um, not vegan, sorry, dairy-free option and just regular version mix on each side here. Uh, and that's really simple. It takes, let's see, how long does it, 50, 50 five, zero minutes to bake. 
It does not come with the frosting or the drizzle, so but it does have the um, instructions on how to make that and the different ingredients for that. So if you want something really easy to make different treats, like if you're already making a million cookies, but you might want to make also like a fruit loaf, you can do that too. So they have gluten op gl gluten free options for that. Okay, so I'm going to talk about another cookbook. This one I just got. It is 13% off. It is called Tokyo Up Late. I actually went to I went to Japan like five six years ago, and um, I this cookbook really encompasses a lot of kind of the night restaurant life in Tokyo. It's really fun. So here are the different. Hopefully, it's actually quite a big book too. So it has a lot of photos. It does have some step-by-step -step photos. But this is kind of dedicated to all the nighttime restaurants out there, in, especially in Tokyo, that stay open and have to deal with the, uh, the craziness that is a restaurant. We have cocktails in here. But we have some really fun dishes that are presented in Tokyo, like this uh, fish collar hot pot, which would be perfect right now in the wintertime, miso soup. Uh, my favorite chapter has been the street food chapter. I have a hair. Uh, so it is, we have like tauntaun men or tauntaun ramen. This is my favorite ramen. Different ramen recipes. We have chashu ramen or the eggs. And then you can make ramen with the eggs. We have, oh goodness. Here's different photos of different recipes you'll find in here that are pretty easy, fast food recipes. Oh, I went already did miso soup. Chicken curry. This is something that we make at home often. So I'm kind of, I'm going to make some adjustments because I found some mistakes I was doing. Uh, we have katsu. Let's see. Look at that. That looks amazing. So I think this is a fantastic gift for anybody in your life that loves cooking, especially Japanese food and or wants to visit Japan or likes to experience. I mean, like a lot of these are things you will find in Japan. Just, I mean, onigiri is everywhere. So check this book out. It's really, really nice. The, it's really simple as well, more than you would think, like an egg sandwich. Uh, but I really appreciate this. I mean, look at this. This is a fruit sandwich. It's just thoughtful. So check this out. I like it. Lots of great recipes that are very straightforward and easy. I'm going to have to make this. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, they, they are not gluten-free recipes, uh, vegan, or, you know, it's just straight up the recipe. So if you do have any dietary restrictions, keep that in mind and uh, make those adjustments as you need. But... I really dig it. So check this out. Tokyo Up Late. This is a this is a phenomenal cookbook. I'm really grateful that I was gifted this. The next one I want to share with you guys that is really fascinating. This one's Salamati. Salamati. <clears throat> this is 12% off. This is a Persian cookbook. I was just floored by how beautiful this cookbook is. So here is kind of the photos. I'm losing my voice here, so I might have to leave pretty soon. I don't know what's happening. So one thing that is really, really cool about this, I want to share this with you before my voice goes away. So he does have different chapters with basically like an interesting feast layout. So, um, and that includes different recipes, but the chapters or sorry, not the chapters, but the page numbers are all listed here. So if you wanted to do a big feast, he has already set all of that up for you. I know for me, I sometimes I'll be like, I want to make, you know, a big Asian feast or something, but I, I want to figure out what things go together. And it takes time. It takes a lot of work. So I like that he's just given us all of the answers. He's like, okay, you got to, you know, put these things on your table. So here are some different recipes here. Potato, lamb, and split pea soup. Here's his favorites. 
So we get a lot of different feasts just presented throughout. It's a really unique cookbook. I really love it. Um, here's a barberry pilaf with chicken. I have not cooked out of this one yet. I really, I need to make time to do that. I, um, so for me, I've never made a Persian cuisine ever. So at least for me, sometimes I get really, I get scared. That sounds dumb, but I do. I'm like, oh, I've never done this before. So I kind of put it off for a long time. Uh, but then when I finally get to it, it ends up being a lot easier than I anticipated. So I'm, I am looking forward to this, but I just need to mentally prepare myself because I'm, I guess, a weenie. So here we have sheet pan saffron salmon. Here's something really fun. Persian New Year traditional dishes. I love this. Almost every single recipe does come with a photo, which is really cool. And they all look really straightforward. Here's your ingredient list. Uh, next is your directions. And you get a bit of a, a brief overview of where this dish actually comes from. Here is a weekend barbecue. So he does have, there's one I wanted to share because we do have a lot of vegetarians uh, who watch. There is a whole vegetarian spread in this cookbook, which is really, really cool. Um, here we go, 162. Look at how easy that was. So that was really nice. Here, why is it? Okay, 162. Mains for vegetarian. So we have a whole vegetarian section, but he does have a vegetarian feast presented as well, which is really nice. So you'd think that maybe it was only meats or meat forward. No, there's a lot of vegetarian dishes in here. Not dairy-free or vegan necessarily because there's a lot of yogurt, but beautiful cookbook. You Really awesome food. Uh, things that I've not made before, but I'm really excited to try. Persian love cake. It looks beautiful. There's, I think that's flowers. Yeah, I think those are edible flowers. But yeah, check this out. This is beautiful. Persian ice cream. Super cool. This is kind of an underrated cookbook, in my opinion. I, I think this is really great. So if you have people in your life who love experimenting and cooking different kinds of food, especially if they're not familiar with Persian food, this is really fun. And it's beautiful. It really is. So check this out. Salamanti. And then I think I have one more cookbook. Super fast. Who doesn't love noodles? It's called The Noodle, That Noodle Life. This one's on sale for 10% off. This has noodles from all around the world. If you love noodles, you need this cookbook. It is a noodle cookbook. So here are the different photos. It's fun too. It's a little bit of a quirky cookbook. So here we have different, uh, it tells you all about the noodle, how to noodle. It's great. But let's talk about the actual noodles. So we have a really savory Sunday sauce. Oh, man, that looks good. It's slow braised sugo with tagliatelle. Oh, my God. I might have to forego what I was going to make for dinner and make that. We have a soba bowl. So, yeah, it's international. It's not just Italian food. We have different kinds of noodles, how to make the different kinds of noodles by hand. This is cacio e pepe. Better than takeout fried Shanghai noodles with pork belly and kale. That looks so good. I'm hungry. We have a uh, double double yolk. They call it the double yolk. It's an extra rich, extra yolk mise rigatoni carbonara. That looks awesome. FOMO or the French onion mac and cheese. There's actually quite a few different mac and cheese variations. We have the autumn pumpkin sage mac and cheese which looks beautiful. I missed out on that one a little bit. Here we have other ones. Uh, lots of these recipes are very, very easy. Super easy, as you can tell. One thing I like too about this, so we have our main uh, recipe ingredient list here, but we you see here there's a toppings section. So it's not intermingled with everything. I like that they've made it very separate and very apparent to you. Here we have building your own noodle bowl. That's amazing. Let's talk about noodles. So variations on noodles. This is a taco noodle. Oven roasted Yucadon al pastor. I'd try it. I would. 
Uh, this is a smoky bacon kimchi fried udon. Super good. There's soups, noodle soups in here. Lots of really cool stuff. Uh, so if you love noodles or know somebody who loves noodles, definitely check these out. Lasagnas, the vegetarian options. Uh, yeah, perfect. Awesome noodle thing. And I love noodles during winter time. It's perfect. So check that one out. It is that noodle life. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you do like this kind of stuff, especially cookbooks, make sure to give us a follow. We do live stream and it'll notify you when we do go live and you can watch us again. Uh, so I hope everybody has a really awesome Friday. Thank you again for watching. We will see you on the next live stream.